Dear yeah, Father, I want to thank you for being kind to us, Lord. Thank you for mercy, grace, and long suffering towards us. What I pray, dear Father, is you have a blessed time and offers up your taking, Lord, that you give them for your glory and honor. Lord, I pray that you will bless the remainder part of the service, dear Father, Lord, that you have your will in your way, Lord. You be your honor, guess you show up and show out, dear Father, Lord, we truly love you. We thank you for it all. Jesus, and we pray. Amen. Amen. Appreciate them while they're here, because uh, they won't be here forever. And so I thought about forming a choir and having all our dads come and sing. <laughs> but then I thought about it again. And thought, I better not do that. And uh, so we don't want to kill the lead. And uh, anyway, uh, Brother Aaron, uh, uh, and come here. Uh, yeah. Take these and hand those out to all our dads. Amen. And we even got you. Yeah, one on each side. We even got you the redneck card that's flannel and got a beard on. And, uh, so, amen. 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 Let's give our dads a big. So happy Father's Day. Fellas, we appreciate you. Thank God for you. And uh, so, everybody get one? Uh, all the dads? All the brothers. I've seen Aaron trying to keep all of them. Pray for him. And uh, amen. So, happy Father's Day. Now, oh, we're going to have a little sing. Mr. Nicole, you will have to keep it And uh, they're going to sing something for you. We'll see what the Lord's got for us this morning. Okay.
of the book of Revelation, uh, I ran across these verses. And uh, the Lord began to stir my heart. And uh, suddenly I want to preach this one. Uh, this is not a new message. This is a message I preached many, many years ago. Uh, and uh, But I feel led uh, of the Lord. Very rarely do you hear me preach the same thing twice. Very rarely. Uh, I typically do my dead level best to study and pray and uh, ask the Lord to give me something fresh and new for His people. And the Lord has been very kind and very gracious uh, to do that uh, through the years. And uh, But this morning, uh, I do feel led to, to preach this message yet again. Uh, and we will be in Revelation chapter number 20. If you would, look at verse number 12. Revelation chapter number 20 and verse number 12. And as I study this passage, what a fearful place. Look at verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their work. Let's pray. Our Father, this morning we are grateful, thankful, Lord, for all that you do for us. And we're thankful and grateful for another opportunity to stand. Thank you for the opportunity to be in the house of God, to hear what our ears have heard and feel what our hearts have felt. Father, I want to thank you for grace and mercy and love and compassion. Lord, I thank you, uh, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Father, this morning we're nothing without you. Can't do anything in and of ourselves in this flesh. Well, it's no good thing. But Father, this morning our prayer is that you'd speak into the hearts of that one that is nearest hand. Father, I pray that you'd deal with, move on, convict, draw, and save uh, that individual. Lord, I pray you to illuminate their minds and their hearts and may the Holy Ghost do what I can, Lord, and that is saved and convicted, changed and converted. May you do a work this morning. Lord, I know not who needs to hear it, but Lord, I want to be obedient and do exactly what you tell me to do. I pray you bless now. Have your will in your way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You realize this morning that you can find a book on anything. I mean, they got books on how to lose weight, how to be a millionaire, how to be a better you, how to have friends and win friends and influence people, how to build a house, how to invest your money. Uh, they have romance novels, detective novels, mysteries. Uh, there are biographies. Uh, you can find books on people like Elvis or Princess Diana. And you realize this morning books are a, million, a, a billion dollar industry. Right. Can I be honest? I like books. If you come to my house, uh, I have four bookshelves, four huge bookshelves in my office. Uh, they are covered. Uh, if I buy another book, I do not have a spot for it. I'd have to buy another book case. Mm -hmm. uh, I love books. And uh, tonight I enjoy going in, in my office, in my library, and I got a book on about everything, religiously speaking. I have two floor to ceiling bookcases, and they are filled with the theology and uh, doctrinal books and uh, commentaries and uh, illustration books and all sorts of things uh, related to the ministry. And uh, I like books, and I like my library. But you realize this morning that God has a library as well. If you look at verse number 12 again, Notice what it says. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books, plural, were open. So we know there's two books right there. The books, plural. Yeah. But look at the rest of it. And the books were open. And another book was open. There's a third book. You will find at the great white throne judgment there are three books present. And you will find that this great right throne judgment and what I just read to you is for lost people. If you're here and you're not saved, this is where you're headed. Amen. If you don't get right. saved. 
One day, he said, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And hear me, if you're here and you're not saved, you're going to the great white throne judgment. Yeah. Yeah. If you right. make it to this judgment, you are going to hell. Right. Yeah, there ain't no getting out. There, this is not, nobody saved is going to be judged at this judgment. Right. This is strictly a judgment for lost people. Yeah. Right. For many years, people believed that uh, you know, we were all judged uh, at one judgment. It's simply not true. Uh, the judgment seat of Christ is for those of us who are saved, but the great white throne judgment is for those that are lost. Amen. Tonight, uh, this morning, uh, God has a library. And uh, His library does not include seven secrets for financial success. Right. God doesn't have a book on computers for dummies. Uh, he certainly doesn't have the Harry Potter series right. sitting on the shelf. All of the books in God's library are written by the same author. They are written by God Himself. Yeah. Yeah. You see, there is nothing that man can teach God. And God does not benefit from man's wisdom. So He doesn't have Dr. Bottlestopper's book on how to uh, win people to Christ and how to have revival in your church. Right. He has no need of the books that men make. But He does have a library filled with books. Uh, he is the one who wrote all of these books. Do you realize the Bible even calls the Lord Jesus Christ uh, an author at two different spots? Hebrews 5, 9 and Hebrews 12, 2. And so this morning I want to look at some of the books in God's library. Now, we are at the great white throne judgment in our text. And it is a fearful thing. I did not take the time to read all of the text. We will refer to a few verses but you'll find that God is sitting upon the throne. And the earth and the heaven has fled away. No more earth, no more heaven. And the multitudes who died without Christ are standing literally on nothing. There's no earth, there's no heaven. They, it is literally a emptiness and they are standing on emptiness and God's own power is holding them up. You will find that the individual sinner is brought forth and then judged by God. At the end of this judgment, they will agree with God that they deserve to go to hell as the angels bind them hand and foot and cast them into outer darkness. What a tragic, tragic event. But you realize everybody alive on the planet today is headed for that judgment right. if they're not saved. Amen. Every unregenerated, every unconverted sinner is headed for the great white throne. Now, for those of us who are saved, we've got our own problems. We've got to go to the judgment seat of Christ. Right. But hear me, going to hell ain't one of our problems. Right. And because of the blood of Christ and the forgiveness of God and the cleansing power of His precious blood that right. shed Calvary, right. we have yeah. been set free from not only the punishment of sin, but also the penalty of sin. Yeah. But those who are unregenerate, those who have never been converted, this is where they're going to end up, at the great white throne judgment. This morning, I want to look at those three books that are found at the Great White Throne Judgment. I want to give them to you, and then I want to try to bring you the message uh, that the Lord has laid upon my heart. And so this morning, you will find the first book that is mentioned uh, in the Scripture is called the Book of Life. Uh, you will find that the Lord, uh, before you ever got saved from the foundation of this world, the Lord, if you're saved, based on God's foreknowledge, He went ahead and wrote your name in the Lamb's Book of Life right. from the foundation of the world. We'll flip back to Revelation chapter number 17. Revelation 17, just a few pages. Look at verse number 8, Revelation 17, 8. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. You see this morning that the Lord, uh, all the saved people's names were written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. You say, how could that be? Uh, because God has foreknowledge. God sees the future. And God looks down through time and eternity and sees all the people that would accept His Son as their Savior. And from the foundation of the world, God wrote your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Do you see it from the text? And so hear me, if your name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life, 
you are not saved. And so you will find, the first book you're going to find in judgment is the Lamb's Book of Life. God didn't put your name in there when you got saved. I've heard the old song, there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. No, 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 no. If you got saved today, your name was already in the Lamb's Book of Life from the foundation of the world uh, because of God's foreknowledge. I am not a Calvinist, but brother, uh, according to the text, uh, God fulfilled that book out before the world ever began. Just like He had already made a determination that His Son, uh, He would sacrifice His Son from the foundation of the world. Uh, listen, all of this sin and all of this judgment and all of this salvation business did not catch our God off the right. From the very foundation of this world, uh, God already had a plan. And God already knew how to get saved. So you have the book of life. Over there in Luke chapter number 10, uh, Jesus has sent His disciples out uh, to preach the gospel. And they come back and they are rejoicing because the demons were subject unto them. And Jesus makes this statement in Luke chapter number 10, verse number 20. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Yep. Yep. Listen, if we if there's times you're not going to be able to rejoice over anything else. It seems like there's financial trouble, marriage trouble, physical trouble, uh, work trouble, kid, kids trouble, parent trouble. Uh, it seems like there's trouble abounding on every hand. Uh, but listen, there is one consistent, one constant in your life. If you are saying God wrote your name in the Lamb's Book of Life and it is there, and that's what we can rejoice in. Amen. Why I came this morning is because I came to thank and praise and worship the one who wrote my name in his precious blood. And I am secure in Him. Amen. 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 The Apostle Paul. Amen. Philippians chapter number 3. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, true yoke fellow help those women which labor with me in the gospel, who, with Clement also, and with other of my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. At the great white throne, the Lord will bring out the book of life. If they, and nobody at the great white throne, their name's not going to be in the book of life. If it was in the book of life, they wouldn't be there. Right. Right. Hey. Mm, now, look, look at Revelation chapter number 20. You say, why? Look at, look at Revelation chapter number 20. Look at verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. All right. Amen. And so either your name's in the book of life, or you're going to die and go to hell and then be transferred uh, into the lake of fire. Amen. Well, that is the only two options. Right. So number one, uh, you'll see that there's the book of life. Brother Aaron, if you would, please come here and sit, <clears throat> sit right there on that corner, please. Sir. <laughs> the second book in God's library. Take your Bible, turn to, the, turn to the Gospel of John, chapter number 12. The Gospel of John. Chapter number 12. I want you to see this. I'll tie it all together in just a moment. Stay with me. Uh, the Gospel of John, chapter number 12. Look at verse 48. John 12, 48. This is what the Bible says. He that rejecteth me. Now remember the great white throne is for those who aren't saved. So the Lord is setting a context for you. He said everybody that has rejected me. Look at the rest of the statement. And receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Amen. The second book found at the judgment, the great white throne judgment, is a King James Bible. Amen. Right. God in His word uh, and, and this, you realize what this book is? It's a law book. Yeah. I understand it's light for my path and a uh, lamp under my feet. I understand it's food for my nourishment as a Christian. I understand that it, uh, it is a, a light in a dark world. I understand uh, all of those uh, pictures that God gives of His Word uh, throughout the Bible. Uh, but hear me, uh, this is also the law book of the universe. Right. Many years ago, I was a bell bond. Before I came to pastor this church, that's what I did. And uh, I used to go set in court. 
my friend, Brother Jason Fuller, my pastor, his daddy was a judge. He's retired now. He was a judge for years in Gordon County, Georgia. And I'd go in Judge Fuller's courtroom. And Judge Fuller is a tremendous blessing. He had witnessed them fellas from the bench. The state didn't like it. He just he didn't care. Right. I don't remember how many folks got saved in Judge Fuller's office. But Judge Fuller would, would sit down and they would bring out, they'd bring out a row of them. They'd all be shackled together. There'd be 8, 10, 12, 15 of them. And they'd march them into the courtroom. They'd all be shackled together. And they'd all sit down on a big pew. And one by one, they would bring them up. And Judge Fuller would call his name. And he'd say, Joe Smith, you were charged with violating uh, Georgia Statute 37-5, theft by unlawful taking. How do you plead? He'd say, not guilty, Your Honor. And uh, then Judge Fuller would uh, have witnesses and different things come up and he would find him guilty or not guilty. And then somebody else would come up and they'd say, you're guilty. And he'd say, uh, you're guilty. You know, of, of Georgia Statute 81-4. You have violated the criminal code of, of whatever. He would quote the statute. You know why? There are laws on the books in America and in Georgia and in South Carolina that our government expects you and I to follow. Right. And if we fail to follow those laws that are written in our books, you know what's going to happen? There is a penalty and there is a punishment for breaking the law of South Carolina. Right. Amen. Do you realize this morning that our God is the same way? Except his laws don't change from state to state. But this morning his laws are eternal. And they affect the entire universe. Amen. And for those who refuse to honor and obey the laws of God. They will be judged one day at the great white throne judgment. And God is going to bring the law book of the universe out. And he's going to flip it open. And he's going to judge those people based on this book. You're right. Amen. Amen. Did you see what it said in John 12, 48? He has one that will judge him in the last day. Yeah, man. You know what the last day is? It's a great white throne judgment. Right. God's going to use a King James Bible to condemn all of those who stand before Him. Right. And that's the second book found. Brother Stephen, if you would please bring your Bible and sit right there. The third book you will find In the third book in God's library is found in Isaiah chapter number 30. If you would flip over there, I want you to see this book. Isaiah chapter number 30. And it is a book that records the deeds of those who sin against God and the works that they have done. Isaiah chapter number 30. Look at verse number 8. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for a time to come forever and ever. God said, I want you to write something in a book. I want, you to, I want this written down, that it may be for a time to come, and it may be forever and ever. And so, listen... There, when God's universe, there are no statutes of limitations on our sin. Look at verse number 9. You say, well, what is he talking about? Look at verse number 9. We just read verse 8. Look at verse 9. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. God said, I want their rebellion recorded. I want it put in a book that they would not hear the law of the Lord and that they are full of the devil and they are rebellious. And according to verse number 8, it is for a time to come. And do what that time to come is? The great white throne judgment. Right. Notice this, he said, and forever. When God writes down the deeds of the lost, uh, there is absolutely nothing that can remove those deeds. Uh, they will be recorded forever and ever and ever. And the only thing that can remove uh, those wicked deeds and those unlawful acts and the violation of God's command is the blood of the sovereign Son of God who can wash them away and cleanse them. Outside of that, there is no getting rid of those deeds. Right. 
now the judgment has been set. This morning, Brother Chapel, if you would please come here. Please sit right behind me. Now let's look back at Revelation 20, verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Do you see that? According to their works, how they behaved, what they did. Can I stop and say this? Ain't nobody getting away with nothing. God is keeping a record. Can I be honest? I saw them thugs burning down cities beating and robbing and stealing and looting and destroying people's property and they got a mask over their face so nobody can see who they are but you hear me this morning there is a God in heaven who knows exactly who it was and God is writing it down and nobody is getting away with nothing and you say ah, well I wish I they would catch them don't worry it's already been recorded and one day God's going to bring that wicked into judgment and they will stand before God and you that you're here this morning and you say I, I preacher I'm not saved and I've committed sin but nobody knows hear me this morning there is a God in heaven who knows everything you've done and he's put it all down and you are guilty before God and God has kept a record of every sin you've committed amen, right. amen. Now, these three gentlemen will represent the three angels at the great white throne judgment. Those, if you would, have a seat down here. And the Bible says this, the books were opened and the dead were judged out of those things written in the books. God is using these books to bring judgment upon people. And this morning, I'd like to illustrate Brother Aaron has the book of life. Brother Stephen has the word of God. Brother Chapel has the books. The book containing their works. And now the judgment is set. At the end of the days, <coughs> when it's all said and done, people who live for pleasure and prosperity and personal gain, it is all over. And now... They will stand before their maker. A thrice holy God who gave them opportunity after opportunity to hear the gospel and go to church and, and be saved. And they ignored it and flittered away all of their opportunities and all of their chances. Hear me this morning if you're sitting in this building and you're not saved. You are wasting opportunity after opportunity. And one day there will be no more opportunities. You will have to stand before a thrice holy God and give an account of your life. And you will have to face the judgment and wrath and fury of Almighty God. You're right. Amen. It's a good preaching. And the only hope you have to flee the wrath to come is to run to Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Now the judgment is set. Brother Caleb, please come. Brother Caleb is going to represent our sinner. <laughs> it is an easy application. But it does not require any mental gymnastics to get there. And so God's upon the throne. It's one by one, untold millions are out there building. And one by one, their name is called and they're brought before God Almighty. And God says this, Why should I let you into heaven? The sinner replies, I'm a good person. And the Lord says, Let's see. And so God begins by saying, Let's see the book of His works. And the angel comes forward and hands the Lord uh, uh, the list 
of all of the rottenness and all of the wickedness and all of the ungodliness and all of the violations that that sinner has committed. Blasphemy, lying, drunkenness, rebellion, idolatry, theft, disobedience, lust, pride, arrogance, and he licks all of the rotten things this sinner has done. And he gives it unto the, unto the Father. And then he says, let's see what the Bible has to say. And so the angel comes with the Word of God. And they take this. And they line it up with that book. And the, the Lord says, guilty, 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 guilty. Guilty, guilty, guilty to every charge for every sin. God cries guilty. You have violated the law book of the universe. You have broken the commands of God. You, sir, are guilty. Amen. You said you were good. And I don't, I don't know exactly how it's going to be, but i got a feeling. And you can imagine a large video screen. Yeah. And God begins to replay the sins of that individual right. over and over and over. And with embarrassment and shame, he watches as his sins is played before him. And God says, I thought you said you were a good person. You have violated my word. You have broken my commands. You gave no regard to salvation or forgiveness or church. You had no regard for me. How do you plead? And after watching his sins being revealed uh, to an unregenerate multitude and his embarrassment and with shame, he says, God, I am guilty. Amen. Right. Many for the first time in their life will realize just how guilty they are. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Amen. That's why the Bible says there is none good. No, not one. And as that, as God plays that sinner's sins and then turns around after each sin and shows him why he's guilty. Yeah. Amen. He says, you have violated Psalm 32, 1. You have violated Job 8, 7. You have violated 1 John 1, 7. And he begins to quote the statute and the scripture records. And he says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit fornication. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not bear false witness. And he, as he quotes the scripture and shows it to him, he has to cry in all honesty, I am guilty. Yeah. And the Lord says, as he's on the throne, is his name in the book of life. And the angel begins to flip through the pages. Scrolls down and says, His name's not here. And the Lord says, You are guilty. I have shown you all of your sin. I have shown you your guilt. I have shown you how you violated my word. You have admitted to your guilt. You have no advocate. You have no lawyer. Your name's not in the book of life. You, sir, are guilty. And he'll call those same angels forth and say, bind him hand and foot and cast him into outer darkness. And that individual will be dragged off in chains of his own making and will spend an eternity in a place called hell. Right. Right. He is guilty. And hear me, that is your fate. If you're here, you're not saved. Right. Amen. He will stand before a thrice holy God yeah. to be judged. And you don't have a legal leg to stand on. Amen. Amen. You don't even have an attorney. You have no one to defend you. But you know what the Bible says about those of us who are saved? We have an advocate. Right. That's right. Amen. With the Father. Yeah. Jesus Christ the righteous. He is my attorney. Yeah. He pled my case and got me off scot free. Yeah. And with that, the judgment is over. And he's drug off to be cast into the lake of fire. And then and then another sinner is brought. And the scene repeats itself. 
one by one. God gives them an opportunity to explain themselves. And they say, well, I gave. I went to church. I was baptized. I was a good person. I raised my kids right. And one by one, God knocks the props out from underneath all of their excuses. And God cries guilty. Amen. You have broken my law. Yeah. You are guilty. Amen. And the punishment uh, is an eternity in hell. You're right, preacher. Amen. Every unregenerated, un unconverted, wicked, ungodly sinner who refuses and rejects Jesus will face that, that same fate. Yeah. Yeah. And the books were opened and the dead were judged out of those things that are written in the books. Amen. And the book of life is brought out and their names will not be there. And God uh, records and lists all of their sins and compares that with the Holy Word of God, the commands of God, the rule book of God, the law book of the universe. And He says, you are guilty. Yeah. And for and it's an eternity in hell and the lake of fire and they shall be judged. This morning you will be judged. You're right. Amen. If you're not saved. Yeah. Right. Amen. God is going to judge you. That ought to scare the, the living daylights out of you. Amen. That you'll stand before a holy God and give an account. And you try to lawyer up. They say the man who has himself for an eternity, uh, for an attorney, has a fool for a client. You'll try to defend yourself and justify yourself. But you will hear these words, guilty yeah. and condemned. Amen. To spend an eternity in the lake of fire. How tragic, how sad. You may have been a good moral person here, but if you've not been born again, that's where you're headed to the great white throne judgment. But... Good if you will turn and trust Christ and you will accept Him as your Savior, may I show you what happens? Remember, He said, recorded in a book, He said, I want this for a time to come down the road later. I want this for a time to come after a while. And it will be recorded forever and ever and ever. That was my record before I found Christ. Before Jesus saved me, that's what it looked like. Right. May I say this? It was a whole heck of a lot longer than what I'm showing you this morning. Amen. Guilty, condemned, a lawbreaker of God's universe. God had written the laws of the universe and I had violated nearly every one. I was guilty. But that moment the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and said, you're lost and you're going to hell. He reminded me of this. Yeah. And there, the first Tuesday morning in May 1996, I bowed my unworthy knee at 203 Manetta Drive, apartment number four. And I got gloriously saved by the Amen. grace of God. Amen. And this is what God did. You know, Jesus came, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life. A life without, uh, uh, without sin. Perfect, pure. And this is what his record looks like. His record is clear. Amen. His record is spotless. His record is acceptable with Almighty God. And when I got saved, this is what God did. Amen. When he sees me, he sees the blood of the Lamb. Yes, sir. He sees me as worthy. And not as I am. And there the blood of Christ was applied. And now my record is clear. And when God looks at me, and one day after a while he shall, but when it comes to my salvation, but God looks at me, but he sees Christ's record. Amen. Now God took Christ's record of perfection and washed away my sins with his blood yeah. Amen. and gave me 
the same exact record that Jesus has. Amen. One of perfection. Amen. And this morning, that's what my record looks like. You know why God answers my prayer? If it was up to me, He couldn't. Yeah, you're right. But when He sees me, that's what He sees. So when He sees my name, He sees a clear record. And now God says, He's got a clean record. My holiness is not offended. And I can fellowship with Him. And I can answer Him. And I can talk to Him. You know why God can show up in our church and bless and move? Because He's a crowd of people. Their record looks like this. Yeah, hey. Instead of like this. Right. If our records look like this, there's no way God can fellowship with ungodliness yeah, and wickedness. Right. He's too holy. May I say this? When Jesus was dying on the cross, God the Father turned and walked away. Jesus said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because he had the sins of humanity, your sin, my sin on it, and God's holiness made him turn his back on his own yes, son. Yeah. He wouldn't look on his own son who had sin on him. How much more do you think he will turn his back on us if it looks like this? Yeah, right. And God broke fellowship with his son. So we'd never have to break fellowship yeah, with me. You're right. Amen. Amen. And now I can have fellowship and joy and peace. I can have my prayers answered. I can have heaven as a home. Amen. When I go in, I will not be claiming I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor. I'm an evangelist. I will not be claiming how much I read my Bible. But the only claim I have is the blood of his darling son to get me in. I won't be claiming about how much money I gave or how hard it worked. Right. When the, when, when the angel says, why should I let you in? I'm simply going to refer him to the blood of Christ. Oh, right. yeah. And this morning, your record in heaven either looks like this or it looks like that. Yeah. For all of us who are saved, it looks like that. That's right. Amen. Amen. But may I be honest, there's someone here that looks like this. Yeah. God's going to bring you into judgment. You're going to stand before Him. Religion's not enough. Church membership's not enough. Water baptism's not enough. Jesus said you must be born again. Amen. Without the blood of Christ, nothing else matters. Yeah, right. Right. So my question for you today is, Mr. Cole Combs, how's your record look today? Does it look like this? Or has the blood of Christ been applied? And does it look like that? If you're here this morning and you're not saved, let me tell you how your record looks. It's just like that. One day you're going to stand before God. And God's going to pull your record. He's going to show you and remind you of all the wrongs you've done. Yeah. Amen. Disobedient to parents. Gossip, lying, rebellion. Pride. Every sin is being recorded. And God is working it down. He will begin, as you stand before Him, He will begin to remind you, I cannot imagine having my sins played out before a multitude. One by one. Every time the blasphemy took God's name in vain, every bit of lust, fornication, adultery, sin, wickedness, ungodliness, it's all being recorded. And God is going to remind that sinner as their sins are played out before them. And God's going to take the law book of the universe and He's going to condemn and say, you are guilty. The angels of God will bind you hand and foot. Amen. And you will be cast into a lake of fire that burneth with brimstone forever and ever and ever. The most important issue you face today is this. Baptism ain't going to get rid of the thing. Joining this church ain't going to get rid of the thing. Being faithful to church ain't going to get rid of the thing. Being a good person ain't going to get rid of the thing. Having a saved mom and daddy ain't going to get rid of the thing. God ain't got no grandkids. He only has children. Right. Nothing can clear this record 
but the blood of Jesus. All right. Amen. Amen. My question for you is this as we stand. Are you saved? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? You say, I do not. You've got a big problem. You're going to stand before God. You say, I ain't planning on dying. Yeah, but he might. There was people who had plans for the day who died last night. This morning, if I wasn't saved, I would run. This is the biggest issue you have. Your sins are being recorded. Amen. The only way to get your record clear this morning is by trusting Christ as your Savior. Do you know Him? Do you know Him? Are you 100% sure heaven's your home? You say, I don't. Then why don't you slip out of your seat? Come. You say, but I was raised in church. I don't care. Come. You say, what are people going to think? you got bigger problems than what people think. Why don't you come? Run to God. Get forgiveness of your sins. Jesus is our advocate. He is our lawyer. He'll take your case, forgive your sins, and wipe your record clean. You can be forgiven today. You can have a home in heaven. But you're going to need somebody bigger than you. You can't fix it on your own. Why don't you slip out of your seat and come? Father, I've done my best. I pray you'd take this weak, frail attempt at preaching. God, I pray you'd, the Holy Ghost would speak unto the hearts of the listener. And Father, for that one under the sound of my voice that is not saved, our prayer is you deal with, move on, draw and convict. Help them to realize they are helpless in and of themselves to, to get to heaven. Lord, help them to realize the severity of their problem, their sins are being recorded every day. They are guilty. They have broken the laws of God. And they will be judged. The only hope they got, the only, the only recourse they have is to trust Christ as their Savior. He's our lawyer. Help them to come. Trust Christ as their Savior as we sing in Jesus' name. Are you ready? Do you know Him? Listen, God didn't tell me to preach this for no reason. Do you know Him? Are you ready? You're condemned, you're lost, you're guilty. There will be a judgment. Why don't you slip out of your seat, God? Trust Christ as you say. You'll wish a million times over you If you don't, why don't you come as we say?
Nobody moves. We're, we're done. We're dismissing. Come. Before it's too late. Once death comes, it's over. You can't get, get right with God then. Get right with God this morning. Why don't you come and be saved?